Other Five presents The Big Waves. every possible witness, Chief. Good. Let's go in my office for a minute, Captain. Now, what's the situation? Oh, the usual confusion. This guy, Lamont, who owns the jewelry store, says that the robber was six foot two and had light hair. Then there's some woman we talked to yesterday who swears he had dark hair and was five foot two. Miss Foster, what are you doing in here? I was waiting to see Chief Broderick. And, and you too, Captain. We're busy right now, Helen. Why don't you get back to your desk and we'll call you? I've got to talk to you. It's important. So is this new case. Now, I don't like to give orders, but get back to your job while we try to do ours. Aren't you trying to catch the man who held up the jewelry store? Yes, as soon as we can get an accurate description. What I want to tell you is that you have his description in your files and and I can give you his name. Yes? Who is he? You see, I was there, right at the store. I, I was so sure, I was so positive he'd be there... He told me, you see, and... Wait, uh, I, I don't quite understand. Well, I recognized him even with his mask on. He, he almost knocked me over when he ran out. It was Luke Morton. Are you saying that some man named Morton told you beforehand that he was going to rob the store? Well, yes. And no. I mean, I knew him in college. Answer my question. I will, I will. I, I must make this clear, sir. I, I haven't seen him since we graduated, and... And five years ago, Professor Barnes asked us both to stay for postgraduate work because we'd worked together and set all kinds of records for ESP research. Slow down, Helen. Slow down. Yes, sir. You say you and Morton teamed up for ESP mm -hmm. research in extrasensory perception? Yes, sir. Why, uh, when the British Society for Psychic Research even flew a man over. We were phenomenal. And, oh, the scores we made... You know, I, I picked up Luke's thoughts like a radio receiver. His brain waves came to me Oh, and... boy. Well, you can verify that, Captain. I'm very telepathic. We were so fantastically good that sometimes it frightens me. Like, well, like it did at my desk this morning. So he walked to your desk and he said that he... Oh, please, please take me seriously. I was working and, and suddenly I felt Luke was sending again, so I didn't move. I concentrated. I, I felt him planning. Of course, he couldn't know I was receiving, but I I could almost hear Lamotte. Lamotte. Telepathy, huh? <laughs> Chief, this kid's working with Morton. Do you get her angle? If I was working with him, why would I come to you? Well, here's why, for a starter. He's always suspect on a job like this. There's a reward out for him, and you play the percentages. How can you lose? If it comes up, Morton, you collect. Hold it, Tom. Roderick? Your indications, Chief, on the Lamotte stick-up? Yes, Matt. Two eyewitnesses saw him running through the crowd, and they both check him out at 5'8", dark hair, wiry. The description fits Luke Morton, and the job has his earmark. Helen, where did you say he lives? I have no idea. So catch those waves, kid. Concentrate. Back to you, Matt. Hear this. Yes, sir. Order the detail to stay with it and get out an APB for Morton. What's the matter, kid? You got rust in the old antenna? Cut it out, Captain. I mean that. I'm not after a reward, Chief. I'll, I'll get back to my work now. Come back here. Sit down. Well, I had to tell you, that's all. And I thank you. I know there's just enough scientific proof of telepathic communication to make this possible. Call Professor Bond at State College. He'll tell you. Look, it doesn't matter whether or not we believe you. I'm wondering why we spend our taxpayers' money for computers and scientific crime detection machinery when you've got all the answers in your head. Are you laughing at me, too? I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt, Helen. Now, we've been after Morton for months. Suppose we don't get him this time. Will you, can you, communicate with him the next time he plans a job? I can't promise. But I can try. If you can tell me he's pulling a heist or he's blowing a safe, before he blows it, I'll take a chance. 
you may get that reward, and who knows, you may even convince Captain Doyle. Hmm. Meantime, thanks, Helen. That's all. Yes, sir. Roderick, you're losing your grip. Forget the lab and the methods at work. Never mind using shoe leather. Just let Miss Foster tune in on the crooks and we'll clean them out in a week. <laughs> yeah, and her waves will wash us out of our job. Never mind, Tom. There's something in the wind here, and I'm going to nail it down. I'll nail it down. Ten to one says she's working with Morton. Then what's her angle? <laughs> Come on, get cracking. Use your ESP. <laughs> Those waves don't speak to me, Chief. Okay, enough is enough. Get her file from personnel and check her out. I'll call State College, and I want Helen Foster followed. Put a round-the-clock tail on her. See if she leads us to Morton. <laughs> Honey, you all right? Oh, that was a breeze. Thanks for getting out of my way. I did go at headquarters. Oh, pretty much like we figured. They didn't swallow it, but Broderick's willing to string along. Uh, you're tops, kid. Like, are we set for the big one? Well, I'm not sure. You know, they really should trust me more. I think, well, I think you or Jake better take the next step to build me in a little stronger. Well, that's up to you. Well, I say take it. Okay. Oh, about later. I can tell they aren't tapping this line yet, but they might. Oh, and they've got a detective following me, so <laughs> stay away from me, honey. Okay, call me from a booth. And in case it's necessary, I'll shoot Jake's new girlfriend over to you. Who's she? Her name's uh, Grace Miles. Oh. And personally, I don't know what he sees in a crow like her, but I, I guess that's his business. Anyhow, I, I will say she's plenty smart. Okay. Be careful, amigo. When we get married in Brazil, I want you all in one piece. In spades, baby. With you in one hand and a million bucks in the other. Put those cards away, Chief. What about Helen Foster and Luke Morton? All right, so the college professor says they can communicate like magic. As far as we know, she's truthful. Our tail says she's acting normal. I still say there's something rotten in all of Scandinavia, and we should lock her up on suspicion. <laughs> Captain, in my hand, I hold an ESP card. I'm looking at it, thinking of it. I'm sending out waves, big waves. Does the card show a circle, a cross? Read me loud. Oh, Read me clear. Come in. Something on your mind, Helen? Well, you asked me to tell you if I ever received from Morton. What's the matter? You look upset. Oh, I'm all right, really. I, I have this feeling now. He's going to crack a safe. Right now? Yes, yes. It started coming in. Where is he? Well, I can't see him. I mean, you know, you don't see things. Uh, uh, he's sure he's alone. And the building's empty. It's a warehouse, I think. Oh, come on. Stop wasting our time, Foster. Pipe down, Captain, and get on the intercom. Tell Matt to stand by. Uh, Communications. Hello, Matt Doyle. Chief says stand by. Now, Helen? Well, uh, Morton, yeah. Morton thinks the traffic on 12th look, Street is pretty uh, light uh, right oh, now. Here, you got He's a alone. car in the warehouse district on 12th Street? 22 is in the area. Well, tell him something's going to bust loose. He's thinking of... Thinking of... Will something. Will... Will, will Wilbur something. Uh, <sighs> Oh, Chief, I, I don't know. I... Sit down, Helen. I'll take it, Tom. Okay, Matt. Broderick, hear this. The Wilbur Company Warehouse, 12th Avenue at 6th Street. Shoot 22 in. A robbery may be in progress. Move it. Here, Helen. Try this. Oh, thank you. Uh... I, I don't know why I'm so nervous. I, I never was before. Usually it, it comes easily, kind of kind of automatic, you know? 
Well, maybe it's because this is the first time I felt I just had to receive right. It's so important to you, I, I had to be sure. You know, Morton was nice in college, but I hope you catch him. I, uh, I'll, I'll go back to my desk now. No, Foster, wait till we get the check back. Do you believe me, Captain Doyle? Me? Well, frankly, I think you're a nut. Oh. But when we can't catch flies with vinegar, I'll try honey or anything. I'm more and more curious about your angle. Well, I, I thought I explained all that to you. Anyone who has this ability should use it for good, not for evil. Roderick? Chief, 22 got the guy outside the Wilbur warehouse with a sack full of tools and nitro the works. <gasps> Is it Luke Morton? No, sir. He's identified as Jake West, Morton's right-hand man. Tell him to bring him in. I, I guess Morton was thinking about him, so I knew... <laughs> I'm a son of a gun. That's close enough for me, Tom. <laughs> what do you think of her now? What do I think? Look, with that dame around here, I'm going to give up thinking. Luke, honey? You really goofed, Helen. What's the matter with you? I didn't goof. Your stooge must have, must have been late. I gave him time to get away. Not the way I figure it. Anyway, you took my boy out of circulation. Oh, well, what difference does it make? He won't squeal, and, and he doesn't know about the big one. Look, honey, the chief and Doyle are eating out of my hand, and it's coming up roses for us. We're all set for the number one job. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, aren't we in this together? For keeps? Oh, sure we are. This down in the dumps about Jake. I guess Grace is, too. She'll contact you shortly. Well, she doesn't have to. I know what to do. Maybe I'm changing signals a little, so play it exactly like she says. Get me? Okay. And then we fly to Rio, right? Right. Away we go. <laughs> Now, don't mind me, but aren't you my old school friend, Helen Foster? Well, yes, I'm Helen Foster, but I don't think Keep I... walking and keep it casual. I'm Grace Miles. Oh. Hi, Grace. <laughs> you know, I'm surprised. I mean, for some reason, I expected you'd be kind of a plain Jane, you know, a little frowsy. Who said I'm frowsy? No one. But I guess when our mutual friend said you were plenty smart... Well, I assumed you'd be the scholarly type with horn-rimmed glasses and black stockings and... and just look at you. A glamorous redhead. So thanks. It's natural. Hmm. Here's your final instructions from our friend. Okay. Oh, I want to tell you I'm awfully sorry about your boyfriend. The police weren't supposed to nail him. I'm sorry. Well, as Luke says, guys like Jake, they come and they go. Well, it was his own fault. He... He should have been out of the warehouse long before I told Broderick I was getting the wave. Ah, put him out of your mind and concentrate on the big one. Okay. Luke will be all alone. He'll drive to the Webster plant to blow the payroll safe. So this time, it's his neck. Oh, don't I know it. So it's absolutely imperative that the police loft squad is decoyed to the other side of town. You've got to convince them you read him blowing the brown coat safe at that time four miles away. Great. Grace, Luke and I have been over it a, a dozen times. Well, the time schedule's important. Did he tell you he's changed it? Well, he mentioned a switch. So here it is. He's moved the time up half an hour. In other words, he pulls the job at 10 tonight instead of 9.30. So don't fire your guns too soon. Is that clear? It's all clear, except why he's changing it. He switched for the simple reason he can drive straight to the airport and take off with you before the police know what's happened. Oh, I understand. If he does it earlier, he figures the alarm might go out too far ahead of departure time. And with the police alerted, well, we don't want you to goof this one. I didn't... 
You said we. You and Luke... I said Luke says you follow orders. So good luck, Helen. And happy landings. Foster, sir, about five minutes ago, about 20 minutes to 10, I felt Luke. I I'm at home, and I'm getting the waves again. Keep talking, Helen. They're big waves, very big. I feel that he's thinking he's very smart. He knows all the ropes and tomorrow's payday at some of the plants. They have lots of cash on hand. Can you be more specific? I I'm not sure, sir. I feel some, some color coming from him, like black or green, or maybe brown. Brown, is there some place like brown? Does it mean something? A, a brown company with a big payroll. Could it be the Brown Corporation? Brown Co? Brown Co? Brown, brown. Yes, that may be it, yes. Uh, suddenly, it seems very clear. And... All right, Helen. I'll pick you up on my way out. Oh, no, no, please, sir. I, I don't want to go. I'm, I'm scared. My dear I... girl, I advise you. In fact, I'm telling you to wait right where you are. This is an order. Right at this moment, Helen, where is Luke Morton? Are you tuned in? Oh, stop making fun of me, Captain. But I'm an authority on ESP. I've been reading up on it, and the book says once you've got an antenna stuck on your head, you can always... Oh, back off, Tom. Where's your loft detail now? They're way ahead of us, Chief. They got Broncos take out. Come in, sir. Give me that mic. Broderick, Matt. Car 11 just reported. The safe was blown at the Webster plant at approximately 9.30. Repeat that location. The Webster plant. What's the situation? 11 arrived on the scene just a few minutes ago, sir. No leads except that a car was seen at the office gate during the time of the robbery. It was driven by a red-headed woman. <gasps> car was not seen after the robbery, sir. License number? No further information, Chief. Right. Now, I read you clear, Helen. And I think you've taken us in. You suckered us away. What does Morton say to that, kid? Telepathy. Can you tune in on the redhead? You haven't been taken in. Maybe I have. You want to catch some cold, Chief? I want your story, and I want it straight. Well, all right, you go to the airport. South American Lines departure for Brazil. Hurry up. You heard her, Sergeant. Get moving. Chief, Fred, you're letting her sucker us again. Oh, shut up, Captain. I'm telling the truth. I'm a woman, and I don't need any telepathy to tell me what's going on, especially with that redhead. Helen, what are you doing here? Oh, my sweetie, I heard you blew the safe and did it just perfectly. Except that you did it ahead of time. Have you got the money? Keep your voice down. Well, as long as you've got the money and our tickets for Rio. I... Well, hello, Red. Hmm. Imagine meeting you here. Come on, Luke. Time to get aboard. Let's go. You're staying right here, Miss Miles. No. Put your hands out. Take Morton, Tom. Got him. Now, Helen... Before we take the payroll off the plane, put your hands out, but, too. But why? You can't arrest me. I... Oh, yes, I can. And with considerable regret. And I do. And don't disappoint me, Helen. As one ESP expert to another, please say you knew this was coming. I couldn't foresee where it would lead, Tom, but it sure paid us to follow it. I didn't realize Morton gave us his number one boy so he could take Grace to Rio. Tried to give Helen the slip. Too bad he'd done our Helen wrong and she'll get a couple of years at least. Aren't you sorry, too? Me? I'm getting a wave. It says there's plenty more stenographers in the pool. Huh. <laughs> Mine says we'll never find another one like Helen. 
I'm going to miss that girl. Theater 5 has presented The Big Waves, written by John M. Young, directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Natalie Priest, John Gibson, George Petrie, Marco Daniels, and Marianne Hawksworth. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlas Dutsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Mr. Lee Bowman. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. That's Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.